Toastmasters of the Day, fellow Toastmasters and guests, good evening. Good, good evening. evening. My speech is called A Night at the Golf Club. I must confess, the only thing I know about golf is it's a good walk spoiled. I know nothing about golf. I thought my wife knew nothing about golf too. Sometimes there's a bit of confusion between the couples. And I was very confused when she came home and she said to me, I want to go to the golf club. You don't play golf, you have no interest in it. When do you want to go, I said. Wednesday night, she said. Dark, I thought. Why do you want to go to the golf club, she said. I said. She replied that she'd been to a coffee morning and she'd met an English lady and she was going to give a speech at the golf club. Could we go? Okay. Didn't really want to go particularly, but you have to go along with these things in your marriage. I said, what's the lady talking about that makes you so keen to go? Ethiopia, she said. I was even more confused. Ethiopia? What interest have you got in Ethiopia? Is it some sort of travel talk? I, I think so, she said. She was more confused than I was. <clears throat> the evening Julie arrived, and I drove us down to the golf club, thinking I was going to go to a nice lecture about tourism, come to Ethiopia, what a nice place it is. It's very dark at the golf club, difficult to find a parking space. But the hall was very nice, nice glass windows, although it was dark. I met some of these new friends of Sandra's, and they had some very nice food there and drink and a nice orange juice, a few nibbles. And it was all very, very pleasant. I was still a bit confused though. We sat down and the lights went down in the hall. All of a sudden, somebody started to play the piano. I recognized the tune. It was John Lennon's Imagine. And this lady, she got up and started singing the words to the song. And on the screen behind the English lady who got up to speak were some pictures. The pictures were black Ethiopian women, pretty much all of them dressed in knitted shawls of different colours, multicoloured shawls. And in the middle of a lot of these pictures was a very old, grey-haired Western lady. I was even more confused. I thought I was coming to some sort of tourist speech. The lady got up to start her speech to us. And I could sense the atmosphere was changing. The lady was a nurse. And she gave one month of her year to working with this old lady in her hospital in Ethiopia. The hospital is called Hamlin Fistula Hospital. It's been running since 1974. To go back a little further in time, Catherine Hamlin, who was this lady who was in her, who was in her late 80s, and her husband, Reg, who died in 2004, came over from Australia in 1958 to Ethiopia. They were both gynecologists. And they were told when they arrived in Ethiopia, fistula will break your heart. And so it proved. I had no idea what fistula was. It meant nothing to me. It was just a word I'd never heard of before. The nurse went on to explain 
about fistula and why it happens in Ethiopia. Incidences of fistula in the UK, America, in most countries of the world, is virtually zero. But in Ethiopia, incidence is very high. Why does it happen in Ethiopia? It's the tradition in Ethiopia for men to take child brides. And after a few years, this happens, these young girls become pregnant. And whilst they might have the ability to become pregnant, they don't really have the bodies to give birth. They go into labour for days. They have virtually no medical attention at all. No medication, no caesarean operations, operating theatres or anything like that. And they're in agony. They eventually give birth to a stillborn child. One of the issues with giving birth that goes on for such a long time is it causes pressure on the side of the bladder of the woman and also on the bowel of the woman to such an extent that it causes a tear in the bladder and in about 30% of the cases in the bowel too. These women basically just leak urine and faces. And their society repays them for this. The husband is no longer interested. Their families are no longer interested. And they cast them to the side of the village. Some of these women have been there for 30, 40, or 50 years, ostracized by their society. The treatment of fistula is a relatively minor one hour operation, which Catherine Hamlin and her husband carry out for nothing. The hospital survives donations and the reason they're wearing these multicolored shawls is because people in Australia, Catherine Hamlin and her husband have come from, he comes from New Zealand originally, they make these shawls for these women to keep them warm at night. At the end of the lecture, piano started again and the lady started to sing the magic just as beautifully as she did at the beginning. But I noticed the slideshow was slightly out of focus. I couldn't see it properly. I was so shocked that such things happen in our world. And I would urge you all, if ever you have a bit of confusion some subject or other, and you're not keen to do something, please run with it, because you never know what you're going to find out or what you're going to learn. It might just change your life and your perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Master Ian. I'm pretty sure he's left everyone with a lump in their throat. <laughs>